This video is about minimizing deterministic finite automata, so how to derive an automaton that has the fewest states possible. For a start, let's assume we have come up with this automaton here to check if a password contains uppercase and lowercase characters. And of course we would like this automaton to be as efficient as possible. So there should be no superfluous states. And if we have a closer look at the two accepting states here, Q3 and Q4, we might wonder whether we actually need two separate states here. Because after having seen lowercase and uppercase letters, we end up in Q3. And if it was the other way around, seeing uppercase and lowercase letters, we end up in Q4. But either in Q3 or in Q4, we know that we are safe because we have seen both types of characters. So there's actually no need in distinguishing these two states, Q3 and Q4, and we could just simply merge both states into one state. And that's already the general idea of the algorithm we are going to look at. It's about merging states that are actually equivalent. This algorithm works only for deterministic finite automata, because we need exactly one run for each word. This algorithm actually works by finding all pairs of states that are not equivalent. And after we have found all the pairs of states that are not equivalent, we can conclude that all the other pairs each uh, indicate two uh, equivalent states that could be merged afterwards. And now we have to de uh, derive in which case two states are not equivalent. Let's assume we have two states, Q1 and Q2, and if there's a word w such that from q1 we can go with this word w to an accepting state, in this case for example q1 prime, whereas from q2 with the same word w we just end up in a non-accepting state, then we know that both states cannot be equivalent. Merging these two states, q1 and q2, would not be possible. Because remember, we're dealing with deterministic finite automata, so there's exactly one run for each and every word uh, that's a possible input. So a merge like this is impossible because we have to distinguish whether we would like to go to an accepting state or non-accepting state. However, this condition doesn't sound like a condition that we can easily implement because it says if there is a word leading from and there are a lot of words that we might have to consider. So that doesn't sound that practical. We have to come up with a, something more simple. This leads to the so-called table filling algorithm. In this algorithm, uh, states are marked that are not equivalent. And two states, Q1 and Q2, are not equivalent if first Q1 is accepting and Q2 not, or vice versa, because if one state is accepting and the other is not, they cannot be equivalent. They cannot be merged later on. Alternatively, if we are looking at two states, Q1 and Q2, like in this example here, and if we have one letter A that leads to states Q1 prime and Q2 prime, and we know already that Q1 prime and Q2 prime are not equivalent, then we can conclude that Q1 and Q2 cannot be equivalent. So why is that? Because if Q1 prime and Q2 prime are not equivalent, then we know that there must be a word that leads from Q1 prime to some accepting state Q1 double prime, and there must be a word, uh, the same word, that leads from Q2 prime to a non-accepting state Q2 double prime, or vice versa. But in this case, we also know that there is a path from Q1 with the word A followed by W that would lead to the accepting state Q1 double prime, whereas with the same word AW, from Q2, we would end up in Q2 double prime, which is not accepting. So we have found a word such that we get to an accepting state from Q1 and a non-accepting state from Q2. So Q1 and Q2 cannot be equivalent. And this is actually the main idea of the table filling algorithm. We now give the algorithm and an example for implying this algorithm. For the algorithm, we first create a table of all unordered pairs, Q and Q prime, where Q is not equal to Q prime. And we only consider unordered pairs because if a state Q1 is equivalent to a state Q2, 
then also Q2 is equivalent to Q1. So the order is not important here. As a first step, we mark all the pairs, Q and Q prime, where Q is accepting and Q prime is not, or vice versa. Because we know that pairs of accepting and non-accepting states cannot be equivalent. And then we start a loop until no more marks are added. And inside the loop, we consider each unmarked pair, Q1 and Q prime, and each letter, and check whether we go from Q and Q prime to some pair that's already marked. And if yes, then we mark this pair. And if not, we just proceed. And we stay in this loop until no more marks are added, until the, the, the table is stable. And finally, we merge all unmarked pairs. Let's consider this automaton here. And the first step of the algorithm is to mark all the pairs where one state is accepting and the other is not. We simply go through the table and the first pair we are looking at is the pair Q0, Q1, which is indicated here. And this pair is not marked because both are not accepting. So we don't have to put any mark here at the moment. The next pair is the pair Q0, Q2. And as Q2 is accepting, whereas Q0 is not, we put a mark here. The next pair is Q0, Q3. Both are non-accepting, so no mark here. We continue until at some point we reach the pair Q1, Q2. And for Q1, Q2, Q1 is non-accepting and Q2 is accepting, so we put a mark here. And again, we continue, and at some point we end up at this uh, at the pair Q2, Q3. And as Q2 is accepting, Q3 is not, we put a mark. The next pair is the pair Q2, Q4. Q4 is not accepting, Q2 is, so we have to mark this pair. And now we are done with the first step, because also the pair Q3, Q4, both are non-accepting, so there's no mark here, and we are done with marking the pairs in which one is accepting and the other one is not. So now we change to step two. And in step two, we have to check each unmarked pair and each letter. We start again at the beginning of the table. So we start with the pair Q0, Q1. And we see that from Q0 with the letter A, we can go to Q2. And from Q1 with the letter A, we can go to Q3. So from the pair Q0, Q1 with the letter A, we go to the pair Q2, Q3. And as the pair Q2, Q3 already has a mark, we put a mark at Q0, Q1, indicating that both states are not equivalent. We continue with the pair Q0, Q3. And we see that from Q0 with A, we go to Q2, and from Q3 with A, we go to Q1. So we go to the pair Q1, Q3. And we have to look it up in the table, and we see here in the table, there is a mark at Q1, Q3. So we have to put a mark at our current uh, pair Q0, Q3. The next pair we have to consider is Q0, Q4. And the first letter we consider is the letter A. And we see that from Q0 with an A, we go to Q2. And also from Q4 with an A, we also go to Q2. And as this algorithm is marking all the states that are not equivalent, and we know that, of, Q, of course, Q2 is equivalent to itself, there's no reason to put a mark here at the moment. But we're actually not done yet because there is another letter the letter B. And we have to check where we uh, end up with the letter B. And with the letter B from Q0, we end up in a state Q3. And also from state Q4, with the letter B, we also end up in state Q3. So also for letter B, there's no reason to put a mark here. We only have to consider more than one letter if we have not put a mark yet, because it's enough to find one letter leading to a non-equivalent pair. The next pair we have to consider is the pair Q1, Q3. And the first letter we have to consider is the letter A. And from the letter A, from Q1, we go to Q3. And from Q3 with the A, we go to Q1. So actually, from the pair Q1, Q3 with the A, we go to the pair Q1, Q3, so to the same pair. So 
Again, there's no reason to put a mark here. But also in this case, we have to consider the second letter from the alphabet, that's the B. And we see that with the B, from Q1, we go to Q2, whereas from Q3, we go to Q4. So we have to look in the table at the uh, entry for Q2, Q3, uh, Q4, and we see that there's a mark already. And so we have to put a mark for our current pair Q1, Q3. Note that in this case, it was actually the second letter that made us put a mark here. So in general, we have to go through all the letters of the alphabet, consider each and every letter from the alphabet to check whether we have to put a mark or not. Only if we already found one letter that would make us uh, put a mark, we can stop. But if we don't find any, we have actually to consider all the letters. Because only at the end we, we are sure that there was no letter that would lead us to, uh, to distinguish both states. Now let's go on. Let's consider the pair Q1, Q4. And from Q1 with an A, we go to Q3. And from Q4 with an A, we go to Q2. So we have to look at the entry at Q2, Q3. And we see that there's already a mark. So we put a mark at Q1, Q4. And the next unmarked pair is the pair Q3, Q4. And we see that from Q3 with an A, we go to Q, uh, Q1. And from Q4 with an A, we go to Q3. So we have to look at the entry Q1, Q2, this one here. And we see that there is a mark already. So we put a mark at Q3, Q4. And afterwards, we have to start all over because we put marks in the last step. So we have to redo the whole algorithm and check all the unmarked pairs. And there's only one unmarked pair left and we have to recheck it. So again, we have to consider the first letter of the alphabet, which is an A. And we see that from uh, Q0 and Q4 with an A, we go to Q2. In both cases to go to Q2, so we have no reason to put a mark here. Same is true for letter B. With letter B from Q0, we go to Q3, and from Q4, we go to Q3. So also for the B, there's no reason to put a mark because it's the same state. And now we've gone through the whole algorithm again, not adding any mark to the table. So we know that we are done here. So we can continue to the last step and merge the unmarked pairs. In this case, the only pair that has no mark is the pair Q0, Q4. And so we can merge the state Q0 and the state Q4, just making one state out of the two. And actually this merging step always works because by construction, as the state uh, states Q0 and Q4, for example, are not marked, we know that there is no outgoing edge that would lead to non-equivalent states. So all the, the outgoing edges would lead to states that are equivalent anyway. So this merge will not produce any conflicts. Finally, some notes on the background. Actually, the uh, deterministic finite automaton is unique up to renaming states. And there's also another basis for this algorithm, and that's the so-called theorem of Mile and Nerode, which we will not consider in detail here.